Hi, my name is Kara and I am a third year second grade teacher in Connecticut and today I wanted to share with you a look of what my classroom looks like. Okay, so when you walk into my room you immediately see this. This is actually a new classroom for me this year because with COVID and everything I had to be moved upstairs to what was the old art room which is why I have this amazing sink um, and so I got to completely redesign it. So I'm gonna go through and kind of just show you our little setup. All their desks are obviously six feet apart. They've all got separate supplies and their book bins and all of the things that they need. Um, in the back here, I have my closet and my brag tag organizer with all of my brag tags from Lucky Little Learners. Up here, I have like their portfolios and things like that and extra books. And honestly, this is probably the most disorganized part of my room. And I kind of don't really like these shelves. I wish I had more like display space, but that's, it is what it is. Um, here's my bulletin board that I completely made myself. So there was not a bulletin board in the back of this room because it was the old art room. So I went and bought um, foam board from Walmart and stuck it on up there, put some bulletin board paper. And right now we've been working on our fairy tale unit in reading and writing. So they have all of their, um, little craftivities that we did for all the different stories. Back there I have my little, this used to be my STEM organizer, but now honestly it has like um, supplies and flashcards and manipulatives and things like that. I have one of these Iris craft boxes down here that I haven't actually used yet. I was gonna use it for math toolkits and then I actually made bigger math toolkits with pencil boxes. So that just worked out better for this year. I also have some of my toothy boxes back here for um, math toothy. Here's their dividers and then their stem bins that they are able to work on for either free choice or morning work. Um, whatever it depends. They all have their number on them. Here is our March Madness bracket. So for our fairy tale unit, we studied the original fairy tales and the fractured ones and voted on them. And so we're still working our way towards the middle, trying to figure out who is going to win. Over here, I have my one of my favorite carts. This is like my kids cart. So they have um, work for if they're an early finisher. There's always like worksheets and stuff in here for them that they can do. Um, I have challenge centers in here for my friends who want to kind of work on some math that's a little bit more difficult, like fractions and arrays, things we haven't necessarily gotten to yet. Here are my math centers. These are all from Lucky Little Learners. I'm actually an ambassador for them. And so I've gotten a lot of excellent resources from her and my kids love them. So these are all the April centers that are prepped. And I just use these plastic baggies. Um, I have to put the recording sheets in here, but I just laminate them and cut them and they're ready to go. Here's where I have some phonics centers. Some are also from Lucky Little Learners. Some are from those like Evan Moore workbooks. So I have some of those as well. Just depending on what skills we're working on in grammar or phonics, um, depends on what goes in there. Word work, I usually have worksheets or spelling manipulatives for them to use. And then I have some writing centers as well. Some of which again are from Lucky Little Learners. Some are from the Evan Moore workbooks that I've laminated. So like we have fairy tale riddles right now, types of sentences, which is what we were just learning. And then some other like free, cre free and creative writing activities. So this is where they can kind of get all the materials they need for their centers. And then usually I have one piece that is turned into grades, whether it's their read to self log or um, a recording sheet from a certain center I really wanted them to do. That's where all that goes. This is like their little one-stop shop. I have my nice, beautiful air filter to keep our air nice and clean. And then over here is my library slash kind of cubby. So I have some cubbies down there that the kids put like their backpacks and things in. And then I have hooks on the back that hold their jackets and their brag tags. It's just, we don't have cubbies in this room and so I just kind of had to get creative. Then I had two more new students join, so I had to kind of move some of my library to accommodate for them, but it's fine. We're, we're flexible this year. So here's part of my library. This one has most of my like lower level readers, like my I can read books um, and 
things like that. These labels are all from um, Pocketful of Primary. I use her library system. It's just what's easiest for me and easiest for my kids. So for example, this bin is girl series, so like girl themed books. So the label has this image on it and then there's a sticker that goes in the corner. So when it gets returned, the kids know these stickers go in this bin. And honestly, it's worked pretty well, I have to say. So I have a ton, a ton of books. There's more series and things over here and they're totally customizable. So you just choose whichever one, whichever symbol you wanna use and then you can edit them. So like for my favorite books, my Miss Capelli's picks, I have the pineapple symbol because my classroom theme is pineapples. So these are all books that I personally love or I want them to read. And they all have the pineapple up here, which matches the pineapple on the label. And then these are my picture books, more like holiday themed books. These stupid blinds get in the way all the time, but just regular picture books that, um, you know, the kids can look at and read. Although most of them I have to say, like choose their chapter books to read, which is fine. Um, over in the front, so these are the only two bulletin boards I actually have in the front of my room, with the exception of the one outside, which doesn't really get used because no one can see it. Um, so this is my math bulletin board, and then I have a reading one over there. This was sort of inspired by Early Adventures because I liked how she was able to display her anchor charts because otherwise my anchor charts get all stuck under my um, whiteboard and they fall down and it's so annoying. So I use these clips that actually just tack into the bulletin board and then I can clip my anchor charts on them. Uh, and then this is also where I keep my days of school and our calendar um, just so it's easily easy to look at. And then I also have, I feel like I should actually move these sticks down here because whoops, they don't really need to be there anymore. And then this is where I keep my science vocabulary cards. Um, so right now we're talking about plants and their needs and everything, and I am going to be putting those cards there. So next to like my math slash science wall where I keep my little anchor charts and my vocabulary cards for the students to reference, I also have some of my classroom management tools. So I know clip charts can be kind of controversial and I really have not used them in the past, but for whatever reason this year, my kids really needed this visual and rarely ever, I don't even think ever, I've had students end up like under the consequence or parent contact. Maybe once or twice there was a student who was under warning, but it was really after a lot of, a lot of uh, guidance and whatnot. So I have all of my students' names in the middle there, and then they're pretty much just move up. Good choices, great choices, outstanding. There are uh, There is a brag tag and a reward if you get to outstanding in the middle of the day. But I kind of just like to keep this as a visual for them as to how they're doing, especially when I'm working in groups and centers and things like that. And the more whole class behavior management I use is Beat the Teacher. Um, this was a free file from Teachers Pay Teachers. I don't remember who. Um, and so basically, me and my class are in competition with each other. If they do something right, like transitioning well, or you know, listening quietly, or rotating through centers perfectly, I'll give them a point. And if maybe they didn't transition well, or were you know not well behaved during a special or something like that, I would get a point. And then whoever has the most points at the end of the week wins. It's usually them, and they get to choose a reward. So we well. We do Fun Friday. So if they win, beat me for the end of the week, we do Fun Friday. And then all the points they earned get transferred for the week into this big chart. And when this chart is filled up, which it is right now, then they can choose an even bigger prize, like a pineapple party, bring their stuffed animals in. Last time we did a class transformation, it was all Arctic penguin themed. Um, and so whatever points they earn in the week get transferred to this chart. And that's like a longer term motivation for them. And then here I just have who my helper of the day is, um, my sticks for like sharing for morning meeting, and then my voice levels, which I have like these animal ones that I found. So it's like quiet turtle, whisper whale, loud lion. Um, those are all the different voice levels. 
And then this is my board, I have my schedule. The other thing I love for classroom management here is these questions, which I also found on TBT. And so I feel like these are questions that I heard all the time from my students and I was getting so sick and tired of saying the same thing. What do I do when I'm done? Well, you can do unfinished work or read. So now I have all these little answers that I have on magnets. And so when my kids don't know what to do when they're done, they can look here. Okay, you can do unfinished work or you can read. What can you use? You know, maybe I'll have colored pencils and that's it. Um, where can you work? Where does it go? Can you talk? Can I work with a friend? And then I have all the different options in these like pocket um, labels again with like a magnet on the back. And then I can just quickly say, you know, look at the board. What can you use? You can only use a pencil. You can only use colored pencils, um, whatever. No, you cannot talk. No, you cannot work with a partner. Um, and then this is just here where I keep my markers. And then these are question um, like starters for after we do like a read aloud or something, depending on what we're studying. Here is our schedule. And then this is another favorite part of my classroom is my my own personal cart. <laughs> and so this one I actually got from Michael's not too long ago because they were super discounted to $30 and then I had a $10 coupon. So I got this baby for 20 bucks. And this is where I keep all my plans and printouts for the week. Um, so like I have my examples for science. I have all of my printouts and worksheets that they're gonna need for each day of the week. Um, sometimes I prep a week in advance. Sometimes I just prep a day or two, it depends. Um, and then things to grade, to file, lined paper, which we always need. And then these are some of my guided reading materials that I just keep close by. And then here is my reading bulletin board. So on the right here, I use the um, guided readers from Simply Skilled in Second. And so those are all the um, you know decoding strategies that we use. So I have them clearly labeled there. And then this is like reading and writing, just like the other one is kind of like math and science. So in grammar, we're working on the types of sentences and we've been planning a fairy tale for our fantasy writing unit. So those anchor charts are up there now. They wanted to plan a story with me and my boyfriend about how I was being attacked by an evil dragon and he had to save me. So that's what we came up with. <laughs> um, then over here, I have this great wall of built-in shelves. About half of them are mine and half of them are still filled with art supplies because the art teacher is on a cart and so she still needs to come in and get like paints and materials and things. So like the right side is mine and the left side still has um, art supplies. And so I just have like my reading groups up there. I'll have math vocab, but we're starting a new unit tomorrow on graphing. So we don't have any new vocab up right now. And then my word wall has all of our words for spring so that when they're writing for working on writing and they need to know how to spell flower, it's up there. Um, on my counter can kind of be look like it's disorganized, but it's actually pretty organized considering I need all of them. Uh, we just finished testing, so I have like all of our testing materials here. And then I actually just purchased these new erasers from the dollar store for them because I cannot use another tissue anymore to erase things on their whiteboards. Here I just have like my current word work activities. I'm starting a classroom economy because my kids need to, they need to get motivated and prepared for third grade. And so I'm gonna try that and hopefully that works for them. This is like my little cleaning caddy. I've got my trusty Clorox and some wipes and some sprays and some Lysols and the whole thing. This is kind of like a catch-all bin. It has like random, like their reading logs I copy every week. These erasers I need to give them. This cute pom-pom thing I found at Walmart that I wanna hang up. And this is all like school files and um, routines and contact grading, you know, forms and things like that. Um, this bin kind of has random stuff. These are some books that I pull for my for my low boys um, to help him. So I usually just grab one of these quick and we'll read. Um, I was just working on putting some of our activities in our science journal so that I can show them exactly how it needs to be in because we're talking about our unit new unit in plants today or tomorrow. So I just put some of those pages in so I can show them. This is more stuff for science. Um, and then this is like my little guided reading organization station. So I do guided reading even though I weren't in COVID. My kids come and they sit at my table and they've got dividers and masks and the whole thing. And we're still able to do like 
groups of three for guided reading and I only have 14 kids so it's actually pretty doable and one of them doesn't even meet with me for guided reading because he just meets with me separately for intervention so it's actually okay so the first thing I have is this little like kind of toolbox caddy thing I have I have my reading level conversion chart because I always forget I have all of these guided reading pamphlets that have all the procedures and processes for the different activities that we do in guided reading and again I use the program from um, Simply Skilled in Second my school purchased that for us then I just have like a little fidget and then I have some of these eye pointer reader things that my kids like and those all stay in there and then on the other side hand sanitizer because every time they come to the table they need to sanitize I have all of my decoding strategies here so I can just quickly show them scissors glue sticks expo markers um guiding you know pointer things for the text if they need those and this is just so that they don't need to bring their own individual supplies I clean them and then when we do our interactive notebook activities it's just all there ready to go and these are the guided reading binders that I've made to house all of my supplies so I actually saw early adventures she uses this as well and I really liked how she put them on the binders so for example this is level h and it has everything like the lesson plans I have the book all the materials all the print outside coffee etc cetera, etc cetera, for three fiction books and three non-fiction books and I'll probably do another video kind of explaining how I do guided reading with this system because it's honestly it's amazing it saves me so much time and then I just have all their little bins for my four groups so um, they're all fruit themed. So pineapple, blueberry, grape, and watermelon with their levels. And then I have their books because we're starting new ones tomorrow. All the printouts for their interactive notebooks. And then I have, um, the, my version of the interactive notebook that, so that I can show them how to set it up. So I'm kind of doing this as I go along. So like I haven't started the level L yet. Um, so this is the first page. There's nothing else in here. And this way they can see, like, they need to cut the flaps. And then underneath, we're going to fill in what the beginning, middle, and end was for the Finding Their Way book. And I have one of these for every level, um, all the materials. This is an empty bin. This is all the their art stuff that they're still working on. So I just gave her a bin because I hated the papers all over the place. And then these, actually, I just purchased from the dollar store the other day. So I've never seen these before. These foam dice. I thought they'd be really good for... When we start multiplication and then next year, beginning of the year for addition and subtraction. And then I found these awesome fraction circles that I think will be good for manipulatives when we get into fractions in a couple of weeks. So I just picked up some of those. And then here's my sink and we're pretty much back to the beginning. That cubby system kind of just has like all of my teacher supplies I need because I don't have a real desk. I just have my table um, with my chairs. So a lot of my like staples, glue gun, some workbooks that we use and things are in that copy system. And that is pretty much my classroom. So thank you so much for joining me today and hope I gave you maybe some ideas or organizations or can lead you to awesome TPT sellers who have these resources that I love. Um, and I look forward to seeing you soon, bye.